Yes, yes, this is Mr. Controversy, and this is the infamous three-point conversion station. Keep it locked. Yes, yes, we are back inside the Three Point Conversion Sports Lounge, and I am your host, Mr. Controversy. Did you miss me? Hey, man, this is a um, crazy weekend, a lot of good stuff that happened in sports this weekend. When I tell y'all, man, this is, um, we had a great game last night. We had um, football, good game Thursday night. We got big games in college. MLB playoffs are hitting right now. Yo, man, this is the great time to be a sports fan. And, man, I hope everybody is safe and healthy. Hope everybody is great. But like I said, this is the three-point conversion sports lounge. And, um... I'm not doing this by myself, of course. I got my guy behind the scenes, my man G. What up, G? Yo. And then my guy D Intellectual won't be in today. But uh, shout out to him, man. Um, D, shout out, man. We already know you already know we're gonna hold you down. But um, G, man, how you doing? You got to talk now since he's not here, so. Uh, I'm not putting myself on camera yet, but um, I'm doing okay. It's a, it was a very, uh, I had a good, I had a good time last night. I, I, I was able to, I only slept about 15, 20 minutes, but that was a good 15, 20 minutes. Mm. Why you, why didn't you sleep? Uh, you know, um, I was watching a, you know, just a basketball game. You know, uh, nothing major. Good basketball game. Okay. Uh, I was just yeah, I was wondering too. Um, what what happened and um, something happened, right? Uh, a couple couple things. Okay. Okay, we get into that later. But um, yeah, man, it, this is um, you know, I'm not gonna lie, y'all. I'm gonna be real. We saw. We're getting. We're going to get into the game later, but we saw the Lakers. I mean, Miami Heat defeat the L.A. Lakers, right? So they moved into a game six. But what does that mean, G? That means the game is going to be Sunday, right? Come on, man! It can't be on on Sunday, man. That's but oh you, yeah, we're going right against um, NFL, Sunday night yeah. football, and people people are are a certain way about their football that they'll watch any football, right? Right, and I I don't um I don't want to decipher between football. But, you know, first of all, basketball is not that sport where you can go back and forth. Football, you might be able to go back and forth doing you know between plays or whatever. But I don't want to do that. You know, what I'm, I want to enjoy this game. Like the finals have been great. It won't be the same, even if you have two TVs right next to each other. Uh, I don't know. I. I don't know if it's this is the right. I mean, who's even playing on Sunday night? Um, I think you know what I think Minnesota and uh, see it don't matter Seattle. It, it, so that well, might for help me it. as a basketball fan. It doesn't matter. That might who's help playing it. Sunday night. I'm I'm watching the finals, but that's just me. Well, and that's your team. You should. But I'm just saying I'm a devoted NFL guy. You know, but I love NBA. It's gonna be hard, man. Yeah, hey, I'll probably watch. I'll probably go back. Like, like you said, the fact that they play in Minnesota, it shouldn't be. Hopefully, Russell Wilson and threw four touchdowns in the first quarter so we can <laughs> move along. But anyway, we have a great show ahead of you. Um, man, we, we are talking everything. I mean, first, we got to talk about the Miami Heat. 
LA Lakers game. That, that was a big game. That game right there, uh, back and forth and everything. Um, found a lot about Miami, found out a lot about Miami. Even found out a lot about Lakers. I mean, we shouldn't have found anything out about LeBron, but just in case you was one of those guys or people that one of the people that don't like him and don't give him respect, you saw what he did. You saw what he can do. He was phenomenal. But um and then there's something on the other side of that yeah. as far as like what he did right. and then we, what happened. Right. We're we'll, yeah, we gonna get, get into that. that. But um great game, so we gotta talk about that. Also, y'all know what's been going on with um this so called what drama in Washington with Dwayne Haskins and they're not gonna ride with him now. I mean I don't some people think he deserves to be benched. Some people, like myself, think he shouldn't. I mean, but at the same time, do you can you understand it, the fact that they're still in the race? But we'll, we'll talk about that because we have a special guest, Miss Carita Parks, the three-point conversion, Washington Redskins reporter, and she's the writer for the three-point conversion. Also, she has her own she has her own. Um, website with Double Take Sports. So, uh, but she'll be on today, and then we're talking college football, big games, big games, especially a, a ginormous game with the Miami Hurricanes traveling to um, Death Valley to play the Clemson Tigers. I call that the "We'll Find Out" game because um, we we don't know about both teams. You know, it's a lot of questions with them. Yeah, people want the U to be back so bad. Right, right. So, but we'll, I don't know. Yeah, we'll find out. Also, man, this pandemic, what's going on with the, in, the, in the NFL, it's affecting the NFL now with, with everything that's going on with the coronavirus and uh, players catching it. We're going to talk about that. You know, we got to scold Brady, um, um, not just because of the four, but the fact how he walked off the field without shaking foes hands. Was it intentional? Was it because of what? transpire with COVID. We'll get into that. And then what's going on with your team, G, the Dodge Cowboys? Like, what? Why? You know what I'm saying? Like, this was the year. Dak is playing great, but this was the year that we expected them to. Things are falling apart, but because of the division they're playing in, they're still They're still in it. Right, 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 which is great for them. And then, hey, um, we got to talk MLB playoffs, man. Like, it's been real good, and the hometown Atlanta Braves, they're perfect right now. They're undefeated in the playoffs. So, are, you know, is this that time where they get to go? Houston Astros, they're undefeated as well. But um, we're going to get into that. We have special guest Cortland Griffin, the three-point conversion MLB analyst, coming on to break the playoffs down. So he'll be here for that. And then we got Stop It, Quick Hits, What's On Our Minds. So, look. Let your family and friends know they can listen to the show live locally on 1100 AM, WWE, The Real. Also, we're streaming live on Facebook, um, the Three Point Conversion Facebook page. What up, what up, what up? Then we're on iHeartRadio, TuneIn Radio, um, the app, WWE 1100. And that's you can look for that on iHeart and TuneIn. So, hey, man, it's time to get to these quick hits. Let's get it. Shout out to Sherm Beats for the sick beats. So, let's start off with this. L.A. Clippers president of basketball operations, Lawrence Frank, has won the NBA Executive of the Year Award. Frank completed a blockbuster trade for Paul George and signed finals MVP Kawhi Leonard in free agency. Thunder GM Sam Presti finished second, and Heat President Pat Riley was third. Do you agree? Um, you know, this is based on the regular season through March 11th when the league uh, went on hiatus. Uh, so it looked like he had done the best job at the time. Some people think that, oh, you should include the playoffs. Well, then, 
then it doesn't. I mean, then whoever wins the championship, they should win executive of the year, even if they didn't make right. any roster moves. So right, right, right. I think it's it's fair for him to to have won it because uh, they made it was a blockbuster deal, and they sh- should have been in contention to win a championship. I mean, as far I mean, they were, but they should have they should have at least gotten to the conference finals. And you know what? When when I looked at that. I agree that he should have got because that was he made some big moves and especially for a team like the Clippers who was I mean they've had Chris Paul they have Blake they drafted Blake they drafted DeAndre Jordan they traded for Chris Paul and that's only because they didn't want him to go to Lakers but it was great that way he was able to get Kawhi to get Paul George you already had at that time Doc Rivers you had a team that overachieved. So I, I I agree. Um I don't know why OKC is in there. I don't agree with that. The well the Chris Paul trade kind of worked out more in their favor. Then right. And then the Paul George trade where it you know they the players that they got back. They were still a con, they still had put a good team out there. So so let me ask you, do you think he got second because how bad Paul George was in the playoffs? <laughs> if the playoffs counted, he might have won. If the if the playoffs counted as right. far as the, all of that, as far as yeah. the whole thing, he would have won. Sam Presti might have won the award. <laughs> it's like oh, he made a, he made a clutch move by getting rid of Paul George. <laughs> Messed up. Move it on. Former WNBA All Star Cappy Pondexter is um, was found safe with her. Family after a day of confusion concerning her whereabouts. The WNBA Players Association sent out a tweet asking for information of her situation. Pondexter had been arrested on Tuesday, October 6th, on a battery charge and was released on Thursday, October 8th. No further details were available about that arrest. Wow. Um, so basically, she was a throwing them hands and they was looking for her. Yeah. She she got arrested and, and just didn't want to tell anybody. Yeah, who would? <laughs> and then um and people were worried about it. I mean I don't know how they how the WNBA how the players association figured out, hey, we haven't heard from her in a while. Uh does mm-hmm. anyone know where she is? Right. I don't know how they like keep tabs. I'm not sure what she's doing since she's not in the league. So, uh, but it's good that they were looking out for her. They, you know, they still wanted to keep in touch with her. Yeah, that's cool. And then she retired too. Like, that's, that's, that's what's up, man. Moving on. The U.S. Department of Education has fined Baylor University about 462,000 of them things for violation of campus crime and safety rules after the school announced in 2017 that it was being investigated in light of public reports of sexual assaults on campus being higher than the numbers Baylor had officially reported. Um, that's horrible. Y'all remember 2016? Remember the head football coach, Art Browse? And he was a uh, may suspended athletic director, Ian McCall, who soon resigned after an investigation by a third-party law firm found problems in how complaints of sexual violence against football players have been addressed. Also, I don't see it on here. You you see um, Wichita, the head coach for... Um, oh, yeah, Gary Marshall. Gary Marsh- Greg Marshall. No, Greg, Greg Marshall. Marshall. Greg Marshall. Crazy. Like, the crazy thing is I was wondering this, G. If I'm a student, I mean, it's been a minute, but if I'm a student and I see this happening, I just can't allow that to be like, all right, this is just how he coaches. This is not the 80s. And, and they talking about he he had racial slurs and was hitting people, broke somebody's nose. Come on, what? Yeah, uh, there seems to be some kind of intimidation there to where, look, you're in Wichita, Kansas. We're, 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 you mean, you probably, yeah. they're probably not recruiting locally that much. Right. So it's these kids that are far from home and, and he's not the only one to where there's at least this culture of intimidation to where, look, I can take your scholarship from you Mm -hmm. or I control everything you do. And, um, this is a case to where it looks like it it went too far. Yeah, it did. It did. Like I said, that's, it's sad. I don't understand why 
players let that happen, but like you, you might be right. Uh, Mike in the chat says he'll be Greg will be done very, very soon. We'll see because Wichita State has had some success. They want to be good at basketball. Mm-hmm. So they're going to have to make a decision. And this happens in any college sport where the, the program wants to be good. Right, right. Yep. Moving on. NFL officials have been authorized to penalize teams for unsportsmanlike conduct if a coach or someone else on the sideline approaches them while not wearing appropriate face coverings. The rule came in response to complaints from the NFL Referees Association about coaches pulling down their masks to yell at officials in close range. The NFL COVID-19 protocols require everyone on the sideline to wear face coverings except players who are actively involved in the game. Officials must wear them at all times unless they are announcing a penalty. I laugh because, I chuckle because I can see the refs like, hey, hold on fam, like, I ain't trying to catch this. Like, I mean, no disrespect to Cam, but Cam or in Tennessee, 20 of your players Look, got I, it. I can hear you with your mask on. Right, like, Just chill. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm with that, bro. I'm, I, I'm, I'm with that. I feel that. And last but not least, New York Yankees legend Whitey Ford has passed away at the age of 91. Ford played his entire 16-year career with the Yankees, winning six World Series and making 10 All-Star teams. He also won the Cy Young and World Series MVP in 1961. He was inducted to the Baseball Hall of Fame in 1974. So I'm um, condolences to his family. Hey, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be back to get in some trouble. We're about to talk about his Miami Heat, Los Angeles Lakers NBA Finals. Yeah. Good morning. This is Greg Kerr with your sports news break. The Atlanta Braves are looking to remain perfect in the playoffs and they head to the NLCS against the Los Angeles Dodgers. Game one is Monday evening at 8.08 p.m. The winless Atlanta Falcons are on the road against the Carolina Panthers. Julio Jones has not practiced this week and is listed as questionable. The Washington football team will hand the starting quarterback reins over to Kyle Allen. They will be at home against the 3-1 L.A. Rams. The number 3-ranked Georgia Bulldogs have yet another big matchup today as they host the number 14-ranked Tennessee Volunteers. The Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets defeated the Louisville Cardinals 46-27 Friday night. Freshman QB Jeff Sims threw for two touchdowns. Make sure to follow the Three Point Conversion for all of your sports news and updates on all of our social media outlets and the threepointconversion.com. Hey folks, Handsome Josh is here to reveal some big news to all the AM 1100 listeners. I have an app. That's right, you can now check out all your favorite programs right here on The Real with The Real 1100 app. Whether it's sports, entertainment, or lifestyle, The Real 1100 definitely has you covered. So why don't you just tell me how much it's going to cost me? And here's the best part. It's available in your Google Play or Apple App Store, and it's free to download. Actually, you can count me in on this one. So download the Real 1100 app today and stay in tune with The Real. What's up? This is Vince Carter. You're listening to a three-point conversion. Check it out. Get ready. From the oven to your ears, it's now time for the Hot Topic. Yes, yes, we are back inside the Three Point Conversion Sports Lounge. I am your host, Mr. Controversy. Sitting here with my guy, G. And this is the Hot Topic. We saw, we saw, we saw a great game yesterday, G. Um... Man, it, it it was it's funny because game four, I said was like, yo, this is the this felt like an NBA finals game. Great came down to the end. And then game five trumped that from the beginning. I mean, we we saw it all. We we saw them get into it. We saw when Jimmy Jimmy got into it with Dwight Howard, uh, which was impressive the fact that, you know, Dwight Howard a big dude. And I was kind of like, Jimmy, you need to chill, bro. But uh, he was like, Jimmy held his own, you know. But um, 
all I got to say is what one thing I love about this is the fact that you know when you watch the bubble the playoffs and the bubbles you saw high scoring games you saw people that don't normally get off was shooting well scoring well now with this finals you starting to see the big time players step up not like they not saying they didn't before but now they're stepping up but not only that you have the role players not just scoring 35 points but like playing their role like coming up big when they need to you got the drama in it you you, you have the um like i said the jostling jostling for position pushing each other you got all of that it it's an NBA Finals game. Like, this is what we needed. You know, everybody thought it was going to be a blowout. Most people thought it was going to be a blowout. Or when I say blowout, Lakers win 3-1. And especially with Drogic hurt and then when um, Bam got hurt. But it's been great. Yeah, I've only watched the um, – the. I, I didn't watch games one or two. Um because I, I I just wasn't able to, <laughs> but right, right. <laughs> um, but I what I heard from a lot of people is that it's going to be Lakers in a sweep, Lakers in five, and because they're they're a lot of people just look at the talent comparison. Yes, the Lakers do have the two best players on the floor most of the time, but Miami has been a team that is going to like they don't care about any of that. Mm-hmm. Um, they're going to, they're, it doesn't matter who the star player is. It doesn't matter who's scoring. It doesn't matter who's getting the shots. It's, they're always going to do everything to make the best play. And everyone has, knows what their role is. So they're, and you know, they're a Pat Riley team, yeah, a team that Pat Riley put together. So they're going to work and they're going to grind and you know they're they're going to be confident to the point to where it seems arrogant. So, I right, so this was not this was not supposed to be an easy series for the Lakers mm-hmm. anyway. But the thing is, I don't think the L, I don't think L A thought that. I think L A knew this was going to be a grind. Um, you could, in a sense, tell by the way they've been playing. They they were looking for for a series like this. They knew it was going to be a tough series because they they know how Miami is. And before I go any further, can we just get this out of the way? Bruh, if this dude don't stop getting hurt, golly. Oh, uh, come on, number three. A D. Yeah, number three for the Lakers. Yeah, man. Like this dude continuously like bruh. Like every and I ain't I ain't talking about like, okay, you sprain your ankle, you kinda limp it off, like, man, this joke a holding his ankle. Making faces, rocking back and forth like he about to cry. Like, bro, you do this. Told you he get hurt. I mean, and we see in comp- and you know if he has that kind of reputation now because we see in comparison that Jimmy Butler sprained his ankle in Game One, and we have forgotten all about it. And you saw how he <laughs> l- limped out, like man, you know what I'm saying? But this Joker, I told, I just said it before he get hurt. One point. Four times a game, you know that that's that's his average. But um, LeBron and Jimmy going back and forth that that was priceless. Th- this is what you want to see. Like I stated before, I don't know what you know. You got a lot of LeBron, what as they call them, LeBron haters, and everybody hate LeBron. But you can't deny this dude is a beast, and he showed it last night. He stepped up when they needed him. He saw his. They saw his um. Saw his boy get hurt, which I don't know if y'all caught when AD got hurt. LeBron was shaking his head like this dude right here. I don't know if y'all caught that. The camera caught him dead in his face, say that when he got hurt. But either or, he stepped up. He knew he had to step up, shooting them threes. Not only that, just the fact that he was going to the hole, man. Like he was playing that bully ball, which we've been asking for. I've been asking for it for a while. And he was playing that, you can't stop me. I'm about to take it to the hole. What you going to do? I'm 260. What you going to do, dog? And and it worked. I mean, he carried that team. And then Jimmy, on the other hand, for people who think he do, he's not skillful and he can't play, he showed why he's an all-star. He showed why he should be one of the top players in the NBA. 
put the team on his back. He only sat down for 45 seconds, G, or 48 seconds. Yeah, um, there I saw a, a video on Instagram of him getting up after the press conference, and he was walking very, very slowly. I'm like, he needs an ice, ice bath. Right, Stat. right. <laughs> um, but like, he's one of those guys that's he's prepared to leave it out all on the floor. And everyone on Miami has had that mentality. I mean, we, Pat Riley has used the phrase, and I saw it on the Miami Heat social media: "Burn the boats." Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we're not either we die out here or we take over. Right. So. Um, that's that's just the, the 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 whole team is taking on that mentality, and that's what the Lakers kind of have to, uh, I guess, weather in a way. Mm-hmm. You know, to they they have to kind of reset themselves, and you know, if they want this championship, they have to go get it. Yeah, and, and I I think that um, what stood out to me was the fact that Caldwell Pope has been hitting big shots. Carl Poe has been hit, hitting big shots. Um, you saw it in, you saw it with um, none. He came big. Like everybody's been coming in. Everybody's been stepping up. But my only problem last night, the only thing I was not upset with. My only problem is, and it's and it, and it's not a bad problem because everything went according to like. Nothing was done wrong last night. But, LeBron, you got to take the last shot. And and what I mean by take the last shot, everybody got on me, oh, he made the right play. Yes, LeBron made the right play. Made the right play. He got doubled. He passed it out, kicked it out. You had Danny Green for open three. So when I say LeBron has to take the last shot, this is what I mean, G. When you coming out that timeout, you, you got to tell Vogel, I'm shooting the last shot. First of all, you didn't hit the last seven shots. You know what I'm saying? You hit the last seven shots, you hot. They can't stop you. So with, when that play started and when LeBron took off, when they set the screen, he took off, it was 12 seconds left on the clock. Why are you – like, I don't blame on LeBron. That's probably the play call. Why would you set a play that quick? So what LeBron needs to do is I'm the best player on this court. I've been hot. I've hit my last six, seven shots, whatever. You're not stopping me. I'm going to hold the ball, wait till it's five seconds, stay in the middle of the middle of the key, top of the key, so I can see the double teams or whatever, then go and drive, and then kick out, then stop, pull up. You got to take that last shot. Now, if it's to the point where it's about to be blocked, okay, you make that pass, but you have to go in there saying I'm taking that last shot. I, I, don't, I didn't see any press conference, any press conference with LeBron. Um, I don't know how he described the last play or what Frank Vogel said or anything like that, but it looked like on that last play, he had no intention of taking that shot. Um, he had Jimmy Butler on him. Duncan Robinson comes over to double team. He beats Butler right? when he drives. So now it's just Duncan Robinson in right. front of him. Bam at a bio. He kind he was coming to contest but he probably he came maybe like 70 percent of the way he doesn't because he knows ad is right behind him he doesn't want to be a lob Mm -hmm. but and even though lebron got up before at a bio jumped when he went up he's already looking back to pass it back so it's it i felt he he, there was he had no intention of shooting that ball in that moment And, and again with him making that play it was the right play to pass it because he drew I mean, the defense yeah, I mean, in. It was, a good, it was a good pass. I mean, yeah, and you have you 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 pass it out for a wide open three, right? But you don't need a three. No, you just need a bucket. And and then I'm getting no vocal because why don't you have Rondo in there? If anything, you inbound a ball to Rondo. Let Rondo have the ball. Wait till seven six seconds. Do like you see with Kobe, with Mike, with all the greats. Now you pass it to. LeBron, then let him go and do what he do. But you have to take that last shot. If you notice, when Jimmy had the ball, Jimmy was going in no matter what. I'm going in. I'm going to draw the foul. That's what happens. LeBron, he 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 got to take that last shot, man. And again, I'm not saying 
shoot over the triple team after it happened. No, I'm, I'm saying before the play started, your mindset is I got to take this shot. I'm holding the ball with five seconds left, and I'm taking the last shot no matter what. I'm, who would you rather trust shooting a three or shooting a shot? Danny Green, um, what, what's the other, Caldwell Pope or LeBron? I'm choosing LeBron. This is the finals. This is where you rise up at. All I kept seeing was, you remember in the All-Star game when LeBron had a chance to hit, shoot a game winner and he passed it off? And remember Kobe was like, you got to take that shot, man. Like, man, you got to He kept telling him, you got to take that shot. Uh, we, we've seen it numerous times. I mean, there was a game when he was in Miami where they were playing, I think they were playing Utah and they're down one. He drives and he throws behind the back pass to Haslam at the free throw line. So Haslam ends up taking the shot. Right. Um, I don't know. I, I don't does it have to be like perfect conditions for him to uh for him to take a shot? It does he not like ISO because like pretty much any player in the league would love that ISO, ISO moment. Right. So uh It might just be him. I, I mean, and he said it last night. He talked about it. He said he talked about a play, and he said, I, I made this, whatever, whatever. He's like, and I trust my guys. He said they doubled, triple, and I trust my guys to make the shot. That's I've always been like that, and that's true. Uh, in the chat, uh, Ab says the play should have went to Davis if he's on the court. I mean, re- no, he was – Yeah, I feel you, but I, I mean, just like think – I, I, I think because of the ankle still – I think he was more of a there decoy. Could, there could have been some kind of play for him because you can – based on the actions you have uh, – a lot of plays are are designed for the ball handler to have options. If this guy's open, pass it to him. If he's not open, then go this way. Right. Uh, if you have the shot, then take it. So there are those kinds of plays in these kind of moments. And I think Davis was in. I think he was standing in the in the dunker spot. So maybe if Adebayo came all the way, LeBron might be able to get it to him. Mm-hmm. But either way, it seemed like LeBron had no intention of shooting it. You, yeah, you you just – I'm just saying this is the moment. We got here because of you for the most part. You're the best player on the team. I do not understand why. If you're the best player on the team, you've been hot. Why, is that, why isn't that play called for you to take the last shot? Like – and I know that's his – and that's what and, we and love LeBron for. how is he scoring? For. How is he scoring? Attacking the basket. Attacking the basket. And, and I love – I love – I love the way LeBron plays. I love the way he thinks. My thing, though, is you got to know that you're the best player. You got to know that sometimes in games like this, you step up and put them on your shoulder and on your back. And now you're playing a game six. I want to get into this. This this is a must This is a must win. For, I think it's a must win for L.A. I think if L.A. don't win this, it's a wrap. Because yeah. the pressure's on them right now. It's, I mean, they, it's, it's gotten tight for them now. It's, it's, it's gotten tight for the whole team uh, for it to go to six. But if it goes to seven, I, it's, it's going to be even tighter. So, yeah, I, I would, I agree it's a must win. It's a must win. So, um, hey, all I got to say is we'll see what happens. We'll see what, um, We'll see how they come out. I wonder how if this really hurt. First of all, I wonder if AD is okay. If AD is fine. If she, if he's, um, cause it it, it didn't look good. Like he's hurt. It wasn't one. It don't look like one of them knickknack injuries. Like he's hurt for real. And it's not like they had two days of rest. You know. I just know one thing. Jimmy Butler. He, he shouldn't walk through practice and anything. Give him the day off. Let him look at film. Get him a massage therapist. Let him cause ice bath, whirlpool, all whatever, of that, whatever it takes. And I, I and I think that he is prepared to go another full forty eight. Yeah, he. I, that's his mindset. I know. I know they set LeBron down, but it just seemed like after. I can't remember, and in the chat, y'all might know better than me. It seemed like after like the second quarter or third quarter when he realized it. That Jimmy wasn't sitting down. LeBron, I'm not. I didn't see LeBron sitting down. Well, yeah, I, like Le, because of Jimmy, yeah. LeBron's not taking his regular and, rest. And I like that. And and that's what what it should be. That's how it should be. You gotta love it, man. This is the finals. This is this is what we watched the finals for. This is another legendary matchup. 
believe it or not, we hadn't seen two players go toe to toe like this in a long time. We've seen Golden State play Cleveland, but it wasn't LeBron going against AD and going back and forth. We hadn't seen that. I don't think we never ever seen that in LeBron's career. Not because he's weak or he's, it's just just never happened. It, go to state play as a team, so you don't have that. You know what I'm saying? Right. There hasn't been we haven't seen it in the finals. Right. But we've right. seen it, you know, in when the playoffs, but not in the finals. Yeah. All right, we're gonna take a quick break, and we're going to have some more discussion, some more controversy coming up. Don't go anywhere. Have a sports injury? Need to see an orthopedic doctor? Ortho Atlanta is one of Metro Atlanta's largest orthopedic and sports medicine practices, providing orthopedic and sports medicine care for the whole family. With 37 physicians and 14 offices, the practice provides the highest level of care for injury of muscles, joints, bones, and spine. Ortho Atlanta offers convenient access to a full range of musculoskeletal surgeons and specialists. Ortho Atlanta also offers on-site physical therapy, pain management care, MRI imaging, and workers' compensation care. The Ortho Atlanta Surgery Centers in Austell and Fayetteville provide cost-effective, same-day surgical procedures in an accredited outpatient center. Hip, knee, shoulder, back pain? Ortho Atlanta has you covered with specialists in all areas. Same-day appointments, orthopedic care for the whole family. Ortho Atlanta. Atlanta's choice for orthopedic and sports medicine care. Learn more at www.orthoatlanta.com. I'm Maurice Jones Drew of the Jacksonville Jaguars and the NFL Network, and you're listening to the Three Point Conversion. We are back inside the Three Point Conversion Sports Lounge. And so this week, first of all, we saw Bruin Saturday. We saw what was going on. We saw what was going on in um, Washington. We heard rumors that it came out that that Coach Ron Rivera had told had told the um, told Haskins that hey, you got to get together, young fella, or you might be benched. All right, then he comes back. He plays well. You know, he didn't throw any picks. He didn't throw no t- any touchdowns. But three hundred fourteen yards. They lose to Baltimore Ravens. Then all of a sudden, I don't know if it was Tuesday or Wednesday. He we hear that. They decide to go with Kyle Allen. But not only that, also they decide that we're going to make you third string now. Wow. So to talk about this and to go through all of this, we had we have to bring in Miss Corita Parks, the three point conversion Washington football team reporter. How are you doing, Miss Corita? I'm doing great. How are you? I am great. And also you can follow her on social media at Carita C. Parks and at Double Take Sports. So let, let's just get to it. What are you hearing right now? I mean, it's been so much talk and everything's going on with this situation. What have you heard about Dwayne Haskins and the latest thing now? So there's a lot that swirling around, but let's just start with Ron Rivera's comments after the decision was made. So from his perspective, he seems to have switched from the let's develop this football team to win now because the NFC East division is not good. And it seems like he sees a window of opportunity to potentially win the division. So that's his reasoning for pivoting 
to Kyle Allen, who knows their system and who he has familiarity with. So that's one aspect of it. After this news came out, you know, obviously things start swirling around about here's what could have happened. So what I have been hearing is there were also questions about Dwayne Haskins' study habits, study and practice habits after he was named starter. So they're alluding to the fact that he's kind of relaxed since that has occurred and that Allen and Alex Smith have been working harder than him in practice and when it comes to studying film. There's also word that coaches and players didn't really take well to how Dwayne Haskins acted after the Baltimore game. You know, they lost, and he was on the field for quite a while being overly friendly with the Baltimore players. So it seemed to be a little bit more than, hey, good game, like he was out there hanging out, so to speak. And they lost. So I heard that that didn't really bode well. And then this morning there was a report that he was also bragging about his stat line, which was good. You know, like he said, no touchdowns, but he also didn't throw any interceptions. Um, It was a good stat line, but apparently he was bragging about it, and that also rubbed some people the wrong way. So there's a lot of different stories swirling around about, you know, what actually happened. Mm. But that's why I started with Ron Rivera and what he had to say. It sounds like also I – I might have heard somebody say then they got upset when they said when he um, went to McDonald's to order some food, he was playing his music too loud. So that, that's what it sounded like. Golly, I mean, come on, man. <laughs> what they doing? Like right. the, the, the yeah, bragging yeah, part, I, mean, I get. But if that's it, they just sound like they were ready to get rid of him. That's what it sounded like. I was just about to say, like, none of this, in my opinion, warrants being taken from starter to third string. So no matter how you shake it, none of this still made sense. They, they got mad because he was popping bubble gum in the uh, film <laughs> Come on, man. Like, right. stop bugging. He was walking too slow to the line. Right. I mean, it just sounds like anything he did would have been a problem. Problem. Yeah. So what is your assessment there? I, we, we heard what's going on. We heard what you're hearing and what's been said. But what do you think? You've been around this team. I think it team. really goes back to what we just said I feel like he was on a shorter leash than we thought he was and it sounds like there's anything that they were just looking for a reason to pull him maybe coach Rivera wasn't as bought in on him as we thought and I think that kind of showed itself when he brought Kyle Allen with him from Carolina almost as an insurance policy so to me that shows that he may have not been completely bought into Haskins. And for whatever reason, it seems like they wanted him to succeed immediately with having a lack of weapons around him. I mean, he really doesn't have the tools to succeed. So from my opinion, and after seeing this, it just looks like it was only a matter of time before something like this happens. Now, something that I can't explain with everything that's going on is how you go from first to third string. And so now I'm a little concerned that they may be looking to trade him at some point because now it's like, let's just keep him off the field so he doesn't get hurt. That's what it's looking like to me. Hey, Karita, a uh, quick question for you. Um, if if uh, Haskins does not end up getting his job back or if he, mm-hmm. um, you know, if he ends up going to another team, does Washington like currently have a reputation for running black quarterbacks out of town? Well, they do have a reputation for that. I mean, we saw what happened with RG3, and people are comparing the situation to that. And, you know, whether they like it or not, that's what it is starting to look like. And, you know, I've mentioned this before. Unfortunately, black quarterbacks in the NFL in general, like they don't get an opportunity. They don't get a chance. They have to be great. If you're not great, then it's a problem. But Washington is not looking too good. If this does not work out well, like you said, and Haskins does end up to, with another team, they're absolutely going to be supporting the narrative that they run black quarterbacks out of town. And see, this is the thing. Like you said, and that that is going to be a segment next week, talking about you got to be, can't be average being a black quarterback. But mm-hmm. – 
I believe that also, this is interesting, and I'm going to get to the next question, but I want you to um, talk about this, Karina, if you agree. I've always said that this pick was Daniel Snyder's pick. He wanted him. Mm-hmm. And I've been in a situation, well, I, but as a fan, <laughs> I've been in a situation as a fan. You know how we talk. I've been in a situation. Oh, you feel real close to the team. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. I'm with the team. Oh, <laughs> they be getting my letters in there. I, emails, all that. But anyway, I, so with the Bears in 2012, I can't remember that. I don't even want to think of the GM name. Damn. Emory, I thought of him. But anyway, we brought Emory to the uh, <laughs> to the <laughs> team. He was a GM, came from Kansas City, and Lovey was there as a coach. And when they brought him in, McCaskey said, because, you know, when you're a GM, you want to get your own players, your own coaches, your own whatever. But the McCaskey, the owner said, you can do anything you want, but you cannot fire or let go of Lovey Smith. You have to give him one year. That year, uh-huh. Lovey Smith, Bears start off seven and one. Cutler got hurt, missed two games, two and a half games. They lost those those three games, right? Came back, they went ten to six. They didn't make the playoffs, but ten to six. Lovey gets fired. It was like, wait, huh, what? But because that was the rule. I think that when Rivera came in, he brought Kyle Allen. That should have let you know right there that okay, this is who I want as a starter. But I think the fact that when he when he came in, I think Daniel said, hey, you got to get his young kid at least four games. And if not, you know. Maybe you should have set those parameters. <laughs> like, you got to give him the whole season. And right. Then, and know. maybe, maybe. But I'm just saying, I wonder if that's the case. I, I really do. I'm, well, I think four games is a little, it's not a good sample size. Like, if you're going to make somebody give a quarterback a certain number of games, like you have to say in a 16-game season, like eight games or something. Like four games to me is just not a big sample size. So I'm not saying that it wasn't put upon Ron Rivera to give Dwayne Haskins a chance. But I agree. Like to me, it has to be a whole season. Mm -hmm. I personally don't feel like this is a year where they were going to, where the expectations really are for them to win the division. For me, it's more important to know whether or not you have a long-term quarterback. You don't really know that because you took him out four games in. And I know we'll probably talk about this later, but Kyle Allen isn't the answer either. So what are we doing here? So, right. And I'm I'm, going to just address Ab Stanley in the chat room. He says Jason Campbell was not popping either. Yeah, and Jason Campbell played in had a different offensive coordinator each year. Just like with this, you got a new offense, no preseason, no anything, and you give him four games? But, again, I think it was more of Rivera wanted his guy. I don't even think this was – because Rivera is not – I mean, he's a minority also. I think it was just he wanted Kyle Allen to start. It was just like with the Nick Foles, Trubisky, he wanted Nick Foles. We've seen it in other places where – when they want a guy, they want a guy, you know, and I think that and was a guy, it. A guy right. that they're comfortable with that they Right, with. right, and I think that was it. So let me ask yeah. you this. Do you think this will hurt the morale of the team? I don't. I, I think it's maybe maybe a little bit, but not a lot. I, You know, Ron Rivera, he made a couple comments in his – when addressing the media – about guys want to win, guys want to win. So it sound, he's making it sound like there's also some frustration mm. with guys not winning. So if that is true, then it probably won't really shake the morale. I think, if anything, it may show that Ron Rivera is willing to make some tough and unpopular decisions, mm-hmm. and it could actually whip people in shape. Like, whoa, like that was QB1, and now he's QB3. So I don't really think it will really shake morale. I think that right now those guys probably do just want to win and are willing to try anything possible. Right. And and it's kind of hard. Even with Kyle Allen coming in, I feel for him in a sense because, like, I'm not going to lie. I pulled a cat out the bag. Washington called me and asked me, could I come play receiver for them <laughs> this week? Can I come on a practice squad? Like, and they don't have a lot of talent right there. So even with a Kyle Allen – I'm just I'm quick to see what happens. What how do you think? Or uh, what do you see with him them moving forward with Kyle Allen 
Allen as the quarterback? I guess the only positive I see is that he does, he knows the system, so he'll be pretty quick with learning. But the problem wasn't just at quarterback. You know, the issue, is, like you said, there's not a thing. Kyle Allen had D.J. Moore, Luke Cook Keekly, uh, mm-hmm. Christian McCaffrey, and in his last eight starts, he had 35 sacks and 15 interceptions, and his record was one and seven. Mm. And he had more re- he had more weapons. It's hard for me to see him turning it around when there's a lack of weapons out there. Now, if it happens, I, I would be totally surprised. I mean, the other thing is, because now that they do have their guy, maybe they will shift the offense to fit what Kyle Allen does best, which they really never did with Dwayne Haskins. So that's another thing. Like, they may be more willing to be flexible and figure it out for Kyle Allen. Mm, well, there you have it. Um, we will see what happens. We are definitely looking to see how this goes. Um, thank you for coming on, Karita Parks. Um, again, this is the three-point conversion. NFL correspondent, Washington Redskins reporter. Also, you can follow her at Karita C. Parks and at Double Take Sports. as D-B-L-T-A-K-E-S Sport. Oh, P-O-R-T-S. So, <laughs> Double K Sports. Yeah, there's no double S. But um, we appreciate you. Thank you. We can't wait to have you come on probably two or three weeks to us this situation. But uh, you have a great day. I appreciate it. No problem. Thanks for waking up. All right. right. We're going to take a quick break. (laughs) And we will be right back. The staff here at Real 1100 AM would like to encourage you to social distance yourselves. While you may feel disconnected, you can always look at real1100.com. So remain at a safe distance. Call, text, or email a friend and tell them to join you at real1100.com. Hey, this is Jeff Garcia, former quarterback of the San Francisco 49ers, and you're listening to my guys on the three-point conversion. All right, we are back inside the Three Point Conversion Sports Lounge. Appreciate you for joining. Man, we have a special guest. We, ain't got, we don't have a guest. We got family in the building. What up, man? My my, my guy, my guy, Rick. Ah, good morning. Good morning. What's good with you, bro, brother? Tell him about your show, bro. Hey, man, you know this your boy Rick came from Talking Random Ish. Um, also right here at um, The Real 1100. We got G on the video producing, me, my boy Will, same, and the lovely Starlight on Friday nights from 8.30 to 10. Ain't nothing but some good old-fashioned barbershop-style conversation. Come holler at your boy. Yeah. I wish I could get an invite, too. But um, oh, anyway. Um, uh, um, <laughs> I think the door's always open. No, I'm messing with you. I ain't going to do you like I used to do, my man. Um, you be tired. H- <laughs> you, you be tired. So, college football, right? Yes. All right. So I want to talk about you representing Georgia. So the first the first week I kind of criticized my and, and it was first week you first know week. it was first week they didn't look as good no no but quarterback issue quarterback issues exactly quarterback issue. we got on that let's talk about it this week mm-hmm. oh last week mm-hmm. they play Auburn mm-hmm. was nervous when I woke up yes sir. <laughs> <laughs> don't know who my quarterback is and Auburn has has had got a history of they front seven has been one of the top in the last what five to ten years right. in college football uh-huh. what did you what did you get from the game last week my defense is five oh yeah we hey. probably have uh, top two defenses in the country mm, I agree. down in Athens Georgia um that boy Stetson can make some throws. He can. Yeah, I, that he boy, shocked St- me. That, that guy, and he has enough mobility to make plays and keep plays mm-hmm. alive. Right. To hit. And, um, boy, why I can't keep it. Number one, our receiver mm-hmm. is an animal. Thank Pickens. you. Pickens. Thank you for not going to Auburn. That boy's an animal. Get the ball in his hands. Um. 
this week is going to tell another story. Um, I guess the question is, did us busting Auburn in their mouth make up me a believer? I've always been a believer in the defense. The defense, I was never worried about. I'm still worried about Stetson Bennett, but you're not going to. You're not. We're not going to get the truth to that story to next week. Here, here's the problem with that. This is my concern with Georgia. Do they overlook Tennessee? No, 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 no. Because this is a big game next this week, is, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, 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 the game you you can never overlook, especially now. Tennessee looks good. They look good. They prob- they got one of the top offensive lines in football right now. Mm-hmm. Tennessee looks good. That's not the same Tennessee that we've been busting them in their mouth for the last five years. That's not the same team, right? Um, oh boy. I mean, and, and, and Kirby and oh, what's his name? The coach at Tennessee. They boys. Pruitt. 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 Uh-huh. So they done had conversations, right? They they know, and they came from okay. So he so they came from good stuff. So Kirby then made this known. Like, look, we want to beat this team. Yeah, we got to beat this team because that's the next that that's the that's the next step up to the game next week. Yeah, because. We got to prove right here because that defense has improved. That offensive line is, like I said, is one of the best in the country. Mm-hmm. And um, if you give the quarterback time, he can make plays. Right. He's not as mobile as um, Nick's was. Mm-hmm. So he might be more of a, a, a standing target so that if our D-line is playing like we played last week, it, it, we, can, we, we can mash him. But it's not going to be a, it's not an easy game. This is not the same Tennessee. Now, tonight, we got a big game, Miami Clemson. Now, I call this, Rick, this is what I call it. I call this, we're going to find out game. This is the we going to find That's out it. game. That's it. I like that. And, and I'm going to tell like you that. why. I'm going to start off with Clemson first. I'm going to start off with Miami. We know, the, we know about Miami. Miami, they, they have confidence, but they beat. A Florida State team is one and two or one and three. Um, they beat a Louisville team that was supposedly ranked then, but just got the brakes beat off of them last night by Georgia Tech, a freshman quarterback. And go Tech, go Tech. They're not playing those. Yeah, so I, can I see know, it. but I can see right, 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 right. Yeah. Go Tech. <laughs> yeah, I can see it. And then UAB, mm-hmm. which was their hardest fight. Yes, UAB. Yes. All right. Defense. And we're hitting on that. Florida State scored like 30 points in the second half. Or Louisville did, I think, scoring 30 points in the second half. Florida State scored some points on them. And, of course, the fight with UAB. So, playing against the Clemson's offense is we don't know. We we kind of know, but we're going to see. You, you know. Yeah, I, we kind of know. You know. Clemson, though. This is the thing with Clemson for me. This is the first time in Trevor Lawrence's career that he's played – Somebody probably with some team with this much confidence and supposedly good this early. He hasn't played, you think about it, his yeah. whole career, yeah. it hasn't come down to this early. Yeah. And then you look at who Clemson played. They didn't play Popeye's Chicken University, mm-hmm. Walmart, Tech. Mm-hmm. And so they haven't been tested. Do you think they are ready for this? They're ready because they will be more ready. I'm going to say more ready because of the postseason play mm-hmm. that they've had. Now, Trevor done been hit in the mouth. Right. So he's not had – he hadn't had regular season games where he's been tested, but he done had postseason games where he's been tested. And he looked – the last postseason game he was in, he looked average. Mm-hmm. So he's been tested – but not this era. Not, I'm not, just saying not, not, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, in the regular right. season, he's never. No, he, right. I, I, this early. I, yeah, this early. Right. But he's had some tests. Right. So I have more confidence in him, and he can always turn that turn around and hand that ball off Damn. to that boy. Uh huh. To that boy. <laughs> Who gonna Travis take? Etienne, uh, oh who's my been lord! Been there for about twelve years. <laughs> and he been there for a while. <laughs> And, and you don't understand why. I wonder if he's sick about coming out. He could have been the first running back out. But why he co- why, no. why 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 come out and you can stay in Clemson for a few more years? He he can get all his education. He he he's working on his doctorate. <laughs> yeah, he almost done. Almost. <laughs> <laughs> but 
And that defense going to hit you in the mouth uh-huh. in Clemson. They going to hit you. Yeah. But are they that good? See, we don't know. Cause they, you, we don't know. But they've had more of a test than what Miami has had in the last five years. Mm-hmm. So I, tr- I would trust Clemson more than I would trust Miami. Right, okay. Because Miami, yeah. been, Miami been had the confidence since the 80s. <laughs> since the 80s. They always confident. Uh, they ain't had no talent. Right. But they've always had the confidence. So they're going to walk in with their chest out. You're going to have to hit them. But can't – and they're going to have to be perfect. They're going to have to play perfect football. But and, and, and I guess I'm just wondering if a team – if a team – like Miami right now, what they're going through, they they hadn't beaten too many yeah. big teams. This uh, hadn't beat any, but their confidence is through the roof. They're in the top ten. They rank number, you know, in the top ten. Mm-hmm. It's like right now, you know how it is. Sometimes you got that kind. Of, we can beat anybody. We can beat anybody. But is it the same confidence they had with Mark Rick? You remember when Mark Rick yeah. was got ranked early in, in the season? But we know Mark Rick. <laughs> So it's, you know Mark I, I, right. right. So let's not get there. My bad. That's like well, me bringing back. Yeah, you, Go you, ahead. My you, fault. You ain't have to do that. Yeah, my bad. You ain't have, you ain't have to do that. <laughs> I ain't bad. bring up your field goal. <laughs> right. Kicker. I ain't said nothing about your field goal kicker. <laughs> and you just said that you you ain't have to do that. <laughs> my I mean, bad. My you, bad. You that. <laughs> but like I said, they've been confident since the eighties. Mm. You would never knock down the used confidence. Right. Do they have the talent now? Yeah. That's my question. Do they have the talent, yeah. and are they ready for this? Because this is a big stage early. Mm-hmm. They haven't been on this big stage in a while. Right. So, yeah. So, yeah. We're going to see. We're going um, to give – we have a call on the line. We're going to give them 30 seconds. Give them 30 seconds to come on. Um, I have a question or a comment. Or are they still there? Going once. Going twice. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> okay. What up, yo? What up, yo? This is D, man. Oh, what up, D? What's good with you, that boy? What up, man? Um, that the first topic I just wanted to speak on the LeBron thing. You know, I know we kind of talked about it, but it's, it it kind of goes to what Kyrie was saying, right? You know, everybody was jumping down on Kyrie while he. Oh my this. God! Thank so Le- you. LeBron, LeBron is going to make the right basketball play, right? Like we know that, right? And I think that's what Kyrie was kind of going with, right? Like, he know that when KD get the ball, KD going out and going to shoot it, right? As opposed to LeBron going to make the, the right basketball play. Now, exactly. We saw LeBron made that last night. So, and he's kind of messed up if he do, if he don't, right? If he shoot the shot and he miss it, he should have made this pass. So, it's kind of one of those things. And I think that's more what Kyrie was saying in that instance. And right. I just had to say that. Right. No, you're right. And I'm, and I'm going to let you know right now, I'm still in that and I'm posting on Facebook, okay, as my <laughs> comment. But no, but for real though, he's right. No, that's exactly that, that's the question I want to ask you. In 17 years of playing basketball, when has LeBron taken that shot? He's always made the right play a, in a, that right. moment. But I don't think okay. anyone's ever said if he took the shot, like, oh, he should have passed the ball right there. I don't think anyone. No, ever no one said never that said that, about that. LeBron. because he's ever. always made the he he's always made the right play. But even and the thing is, I know we talk about and I get it. I don't think LeBron cares about that though. As far as if he misses the shot, everybody gonna say, oh, well, he. I don't think anybody cares. I don't think he cares about that. I think LeBron fans care about that, but I don't think he cares about no. that. But that's. I think, I think he cares about it more in the aspect of I didn't make the right basketball play. Right, exactly, right, exactly, right, exactly. Right, right, yeah, exactly. But not as far as like everybody's talking about me. And no, he doesn't care about that. So that's why I said he he's going to, he should have took that shot. I mean, nobody, nobody got on Mike for missing to, shots. To, nobody to, got to, on Reggie Miller for missing shots. But it's two different. No, you, I'm, I'm just saying yeah. if you miss a shot, we're not, we not going to get on you. But but you said Mike and Reggie. Mike and Reggie gonna take the shot. Right, right. They, they they are there to take the shot. LeBron is there to make the best, right. absolute best play for the team. Right. I'm just saying. But oh, well, I agree. Hey, we, we we probably gonna get on that later on in the show. We have some time. I, I, we definitely do that. But uh, all right, we're gonna take a quick break, and it's time for the stop it segment. Keep it locked.
What's happening? It's your man Big Take doing big things. Y'all know what it is. ATL Hawks official DJ and Rap City forever. You're checking out the Three Point Conversion Radio. You dig? You're tuned into WWE. AM 1100. The opinions expressed during the sponsored programs on this station are strictly those of the program hosts, guests, and callers and are not necessarily those of Beasley Broadcast Group, this station, its staff, other advertisers, or agencies. Big ups to our Sports Lounge crew for keeping the airways blazing each and every Saturday. But I want to send another special shout out to our team of writers at the Three Point Conversion. You can visit us at the threepointconversion.com. You can also like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. How about the gram? How about iHeart? How about Spreaker Radio? How about wherever you need it, baby? We got you covered. No mercy. Don't let up on them. Go hard on them, Mr. Controversy. Hit them with the stop it button. All right, we are back inside the Three Point Conversion Sports Lounge. This is the time where we like to thank everyone who is listening live or watching this live. We appreciate you. We thank you for the support. And we ask you to not only support the Three Point Conversion Sports Lounge, but the the Three Point Conversion Company in itself, sports media company. We appreciate you. We thank you. And now it is time for the most infamous the most famous stop it segment. Let's get it. Stop 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 my stop it goes to Dallas Cowboy safety Xavier Woods. He came on and said, "Our effort has been good." This is him talking now. This is no talking. They asking questions. He said, "I'll say our effort has been good, but it's been a little lack." Okay, I'm gonna kind of let that slide. It's the NFL. You don't expect players to go full speed for seventy plays. That's not possible. Hold on, let me let me get, let me cue it. I, I got you. Want me? I got Stop it. it. Okay, I go ahead. It. I'll, I'll give Stop you it. it. G, you cannot say that, dog. This is why y'all suck. If your mentality is that, you don't say that, dog. I mean. I mean, you're not going to go the same speed but you every time. You don't say that. Yeah, it's something that you that you don't say. That's an excuse that you suck. That's what you're using. You can't say that. Stop, Stop it. Uh, mine goes to um, former UGA baseball player Adam Sasser. Who was kicked off the team? He should get a sa- stop it just for now, but go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Who's kicked off the team in 2018 for using uh, racial slurs at a Georgia football game, which ultimately led to Justin Fields transferring? Right. And he has filed a federal lawsuit against the school. <laughs> what? He claims that uh, his uh, free speech constitutional rights were violated. And he is seeking compensatory and punitive damages for loss of income and employment opportunities as a result of him being kicked off the team again for using racial slurs at a football game, most likely directed right at Justin Fields, which led to him transferring. And not only that, he is only identified as John Doe in the court documents. Look, if you're going to sue the school because you felt like you were done wrong for using racial slurs, you need to put your name on it. Right. So you get a stop it. Stop it. For suing the school and a stop it for not putting your name on this lawsuit. We know who you are. Stop <laughs> it. Right. He probably got that lawyer from um, on that episode of Martin when he went to court. Where, um, when Tom was like, got the draws. Yeah. Remember that lawyer that he tried? He probably got some sneezy lawyer to come 
sleazy lawyer to come uh, help him out with that. It's stupid. He got a personal injury lawyer. <laughs> right. All right, we're going to take a quick break, and we will be back to talk some NFL football. Can't wait. Keep it locked. This is Vincent J, a.k.a. the Fancy Juru, and here are your Fantasy Facts Quarterback Edition, heading to Week 5. Carolina Panthers quarterback Teddy Bridgewater is a great play this week. He's going against the Atlanta Falcons in a true fantasy dream matchup. The Falcons' defense has given up four touchdowns to every opposing quarterback, excluding the combo of Mitch Trubisky and Nick Foles combined for. Now, I don't expect similar numbers coming from Teddy, but his mobility adds an even more push and wanting to plug him in this weekend. One player who I benched this week is Philadelphia Eagles quarterback Carson Wentz. After a bad first two games with an average of just 13.5 fantasy points, he picked it up over his last two with a 22-point average, mainly due to his rushing touchdowns. This weekend, Wentz is on the road against the Pittsburgh Steelers, who should be well-rested and ready to shut down the Eagles and the banged-up receivers. My sleeper pick this week is New York Giants quarterback Daniel Jones. He's playing on the road against the Dallas Cowboys, who has allowed at least three touchdown passes in each of the past three weeks. Jones hasn't thrown a touchdown pass since week one, so he's due to have a good game. Now, if you want to check out more fantasy facts, make sure you continue to follow me on the web at the threepointconversion.com. Hi, this is Neil Smith. You're listening to the Three Point Conversion. All right, we are back inside the Three Point Conversion Sports Lounge. Gio. And we are talking NFL football. And look, man, do you think? Let me just ask you flat out: Do you think we're going to finish the season? Yes, NFL they 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 gonna get that money. <laughs> they, they gonna have replacement players. They, 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 gonna, they, they, they gonna get that money. <laughs> if I got to suit up, they gonna you, get that. You bread. saw what happened with the in baseball, where you know teams had played 20 games and other teams had only played five. Yes, sir. <laughs> they made it, didn't they? Yes, sir. But base- By any means. But baseball, easy, though, because baseball, you can play doubleheaders and all of that. You know, you mm-hmm. can catch up. I bet you, hey, I can see them trying to put together a ha- one game to halftime, come on back out here and play another <laughs> game. Hey, <laughs> they, they going to get this money. <laughs> they going to get this money. The NFL going to get this money. They going to, bro. Yes, sir. They, they going to finish. Um, my question is though, this, the, the, um, the penalties for people that's coming in up to doing wrong and, and getting this wrong. Mm-hmm. Are they going to stiffen? Because I think the Titans should have lost draft picks for, for going out and, and practicing on their own. Yeah, that, that was, I, I think they should have, I think they should have lost draft picks on that. Th- they should. And. You can't, you can't do that. You can't man, do that. With, with, you you got to go through the protocols, bro. And yeah, that's that's not fair, especially with because it's spreading like wildfire. And see, yes. I'm wondering if that has something to do with it. Because think about it, for a moment, for a moment, it was cool. Like it seemed like it had died. Okay, we got eight players. Eight. Then next thing you know, one day, mm-hmm. n- negative test. Second day, mm-hmm. negative test. So, all right, we good. Next thing you know, we get three more positive. Like, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that that's letting you know, hey, y'all need to sit down. But my question has always been, what do you do about the the the, the people that work in the offices and da 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 da, and the people because 
the rest of the world is open up. Mm. That means kids are in daycare mm-hmm. and da da and you know all these different all these different components that can also lead to you getting the Rona. Right. So so how do you stop that? And you got players that's out here doing their own thing. And so so do you think they should play the game Tuesday? No. No. And I don't think that um the Chiefs should have played last week. That Chiefs and um Patriots. Patriots game. I don't think they should have played that one. Well the the thing is, oh so I understand the rule of if you go through I think it's like two or three days with negative tests. I, I get that. Because that's what it was that was the protocol. If somebody we put them on a the list, y'all chill for a day or two. We keep taking tests and make sure nobody came. So cool. But if y'all if 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 I got a, a clean plane and a cootie plane, if I gotta put separate people on a separate plane mm-hmm. to get that's a problem. Yeah. That to me sounds like a problem. Because they, they did it with the con- people that was in contact, right? Uh, yeah, the people that was in, yeah, they put the, they, they put them on a separate plane from the rest. I mean, yeah, that to me, that, if, that, if, that if, don't make sense. if you go into that extreme, that to me sounds like, hey, we need to sit this one down for a minute. Mm-hmm. Just, just sit it down for a minute. I yeah, mean. Just, yeah, because I don't think they should play that Tennessee. Like, if I was the Bills, bro, I'm not, I'm doing it. Bro, I'm not touching you. Yes, I'm the offensive lineman. Don't be surprised. Don't be surprised <laughs> if you see Josh Allen get sacked eight times. Hey, <laughs> hey, dog. Hey, dog. This hey. no. Don't let him cough. You know how to get tired. Don't let him. Oh, oh boy, oh, boy. Hey, you gonna start have somebody fake an injury? Oh, or boy, something? just hurt. Oh, <laughs> just hurt up. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, Migraines. All kind of problems. Stomach issues. Right. <laughs> Bubba gut, hey, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. That's what I'm saying. If I was the Bills, I wouldn't want to play this game. Like y'all, y'all nasty right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what it is? Y'all guys. got the cooties over there, man. Yeah, yeah. Good. So, and like you said, we probably won't see anybody shake hands after the game. Speaking of that, <laughs> see, that's why Tom Brady walked off the field. See, <laughs> speaking <laughs> of that, <laughs> see, we saw Brady. And we saw the Buccaneers. We ain't gonna hear nothing about it. You, you are the only person that I heard talk about it, and that's why we're gonna talk about this. So, first of all, we, we're gonna talk about the win. Mm-hmm. The Bears won. Okay. Then on top of that, we four and one. Mm-hmm. But then we're gonna talk about seriously. Who have y'all played? The Buccaneers. The, okay. The um, and the Falcons. And the Falcons. Okay. Hey, but we Buccaneers is nah. They was the Super Bowl team, weren't they? What, y'all, y'all played the Falcons. Oh yeah, we played the Falcons. Okay. We appreciate that. Hey. Thanks for boosting our confidence. Hey, we that's what we here for. That's what they're here for. <laughs> right. That's what they're, <laughs> they're here, here for. for. Yeah, yeah. But the, the four holding up to four, he thought it was the fourth quarter. I mean, fourth. Uh, he yeah. Thought they had a fourth down. They they made a big deal about it. And yes, as a quarterback, there's no excuse that you don't know what down it is. Was well, we it? I'm happens. trying to think. Was it a penalty? Did they? Uh, did they? Did he? Did he? He didn't even spike the ball. They didn't spike the ball at all. Hmm. I I didn't see the sequence that led up to it, but I'm trying to remember. Or maybe he thought there was I don't know. Maybe there's a play that he just forgot about. I think it was a penalty on that drive. I, I can't remember, but I just know he. It was like he he totally yeah. Like how do you have a lapse like that? As a quarterback, that late in the game, and as you watching the play, you could tell it almost seemed like he thought he had another play. Well, yeah, he he, he wouldn't have made that throw. Yeah, he wouldn't have thrown to that guy if he thought he had a. If that was the play, and if he thought it was for, if he right. knew it was fourth down, he doesn't. He goes for the That's first what he down. Said. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, he said that, but I just don't understand. So if this was any other quarterback, killing him, killing, killing him. him. Killing them. This was a black quarterback. Oh my God! He gets benched, probably. No, no, dang, <laughs> th- th- no, he, no, he ain't gonna get benched. He getting a ticket out of Washington. So, so let me he ask, would get a ticket so, out of Washington. So let me ask you, what, what's worse, Brady doing that or Donovan McNabb saying that he didn't know it was overtime? That is oh, a, a tie. He didn't know the reason. That, that is worse. That is worse. <laughs> <laughs> that is worse. Yeah, that is worse. Yeah. That's still knowing he's never seen a you ever seen a triple overtime football game right yeah. in right. the regular season <laughs> yeah that's 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 the all right yeah. so let's go back to the shaking of the hands 
This is the second time he's done this to Foles. He's did this. This is the second time he's done this to Foles. Cause ain't this, ain't this the second time Foles don't bust him in the yeah. mouth? Oh, yeah. okay. So the second time he did it, he walked out and then shake Foles' hand. Mm-hmm. But let's also add, we saw the image where um, what's that guy? Uh, cornerback for the for uh, Patriots, Gilmore. Yes, Stephon Gilmore dapping it up, hugging. They they doing a uh, kid and play dance and all of that after the game. Then he find out that he got the Rona. The Rona. Mm-hmm. Now we know what's name is sick and he got a baby on the way. She, his Mahomes. His, yeah, his fiance. She you know mm-hmm. pregnant. So do you give Brady that pass knowing that okay maybe that was it? Because that that joker tried it out. He tried out to the locker room like like he left his phone with his wife. That's 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 what mass media gonna give him that his his apologists, the people that love him, is gonna give him that. Mm-hmm. Oh, because of the Rona, the reason why he left. That was not why he did that. He did that because Nick Foles has bust him in his mouth. Cause here's the thing, you cannot next week because they play they play Green Bay next week, Tampa Bay. Mm-hmm. You know, Roger him and Roger's boys. If this dude go out there. And actually dap Rogers up and talk to him. Yeah, dog, we gotta get on him for this. I mean, now, now if he jog out again, like he left his phone with his wife, then oh we get it. I we mean, know that, then, but that, that that phone with your wife is real. You know, you gotta get back in, <laughs> you know. Cause you know, she she know the code. So you gotta you gotta get back now. But I'm with the testament. <laughs> <laughs> I left my email open one time. <laughs> I know what that feel like, Bruh. But we ain't gonna Bruh. act like. <laughs> right. We ain't gonna act like. So, but go ahead. We ain't gonna act like. They, they, they tell the truth. He 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 did that because yeah. it was Nick Foles. Yeah. Nick Foles had bust him in his mouth, and the fact that I believe he was slightly embarrassed because I forgot what play it is. Mm-hmm. I, I don't do this. I am Tom Brady. I am TB twelve. Yeah, don't happen to me. Yes, yes. He he was eating strawberries or something, or he forgot to drink his own sweat when he wakes up in the morning. Oh, his avocado, oh, avocado ice cream. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Some, something, something something was amiss. Was, something was off. Um, <laughs> I, like I said, I, I think we got to get on him because he that was a blunder for for him yeah. to first forget it was fourth down. I still don't see how you do that. And then, unless he was now, it could have been. Let's be real, it could have been that he was trying to get you know trying to you know like hey, cheat, and this is four thousand for fourth quarter uh-huh. New England Patriots, but, but he not he, in, he New not in New England no more. It don't work like that. No, Maybe no. I want to I want if uh, Bill caught him like yeah, bro. You see what it is now, huh? Yeah. Uh-huh. Them cheats don't work like that no more. <laughs> it don't work out there. Them no cheats more. don't work like that no more. I, just, I, I wonder if that's ever happened when he was in New England. As far as downs, I have seen it a couple of times with the play clock, right? To where they're in the huddle and you see the play clock is at like four, and then he makes the signal to reset the play and that's clock, 15, and then they right reset there. it. Hey, that's yeah. hey, that's fifteen uh, thousand. Let them know fifteen thousand. <laughs> okay. So and then they reset it, right? But I, I wonder, I want to, I don't know, man. Tom Brady? Tom Brady getting old. Tom Brady 40. He's 43. <laughs> Tom Brady 40. Yeah, and, and you can tell every time he throw an out route how old he is. Mm-hmm. You can tell every time he throw an out route. <laughs> you can tell he's 40. So forget. We talk about forget. Do, and I know the Cowboys fans want to forget this, but the You're season. About, oh, never mind. What, what what's going on out there, man? Like, sh- should should your boy be fired? Should he be on a hot seat already? Who? McCarthy. McCarthy. And the, the messed that, up part is they're still in it. The defense ain't stopped anybody, that, right? That it's, defense was yeah. supposed to be top one of the top. We 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 looked at Dallas to be one of the top defenses in the league this yeah. year. Yeah, they hadn't stopped the cold. And and everything nobody go, everything's going according to plan. Sean Lee's hurt. Of course. That so that, that's so you would that's think, annual. yeah, and, that's and, annual. And, and and his and his clone is hurt. Van Der Esch. That, yes, that they, they they are the same. Tell yeah. me, them not the same two guys. Right, right, right. Tell me, those are not the same two guys. Right. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, the secondary is terrible. Uh-huh. And they've been trashed for the last uh, ten years, maybe more. And they don't. And they don't give seventy percent. I mean, they don't give full. Yeah, they don't. They don't go full speed no. for the uh, uh, for the whole game. The whole no, game. No. <laughs> and the D line, which which y'all was on counting paper, on on paper, it should have been the best in the league. But yeah, so uh, did they? But yeah. did they? So G, you might know. Did they switch their their like personnel as far as for defense, like defensive coach or defensive line? Did McCarthy bring in a a different like coaching uh, staff? I, um, well, if it's the same guy, uh, I know the defense coordinator was um, Chris Richard slash Rod Marinelli. Yeah, that, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what I thought that was there. But and I hadn't seen him. Might have brought in. Oh, it's Mike Nolan. Yeah. So, oh, okay. so that's what it is. And uh, the reason why I say changed. that, yeah, it, it changes. Changed. And sometimes it does that where it, yeah. and you can tell because they're not even with defensive end. Look at Khalil Mack. Ever since he had a good game, it was a rookie, and he. No, no excuse. You think ever since Vic Fangio he, left, yeah, it's been a different. He defense. hadn't been the same. It's been a different. It's been a different so defense. It could be sometimes you see that in the in the yeah. scheme and the way they rush and techniques, yeah. and all of that. Yeah, I've been seeing it. I've been seeing it in Atlanta for ten years. Yeah, right. So, the same thing. So, <laughs> so I'm wondering. So now Dak has played great. Dex, why, why can't that get his money? Why can't that get his money? Jerry doesn't want to pay him. He doesn't trust him. So it's a Dak thing. He it's, ain't it's, Romo. A, it's a, it's a, I know that that sounds and ridiculous. He said it. No, no, but he said it. He said it himself. He's like, his Romo mouth. would have made that play. Mm. When I, I don't know when Romo ever made because, that play. Because the running game hadn't been, hadn't been up to par. The only reason you were even, Dallas was even in the Seattle game was because of Dak. Mm-hmm. So uh, the numbers are a little inflated because they're playing from behind. Yeah. They have to keep throwing and throwing, and, yeah. and then suddenly he has five hundred yards. But you're you're not getting it. But but the running game this is, is not been this there. is this is not the offensive line it was three four years exactly. That, and, that's true. and now Tyron Smith is out for the season. Yes, and the other one is out. The, I, was it Kyle? I forgot his name. Uh, Lyle Collins. Lyle Collins. He's out for yes. the season. Yes. yes. So that's both tackles. Hmm. Yeah, you so, but, but you know, we got a new center. But you know what, though? So, Apart, yeah, it's, but this, it's, this it's not the, the same this, line But this all. is the McCarthy issue real quick. I know we're about to go. First, bro, you can't go down on fourth down every time. Take the points. This is not – you don't you don't have Aaron Rodgers. You don't have – you don't have those that type of offense. Mm-hmm. Take the points. Stop doing that crap. You know what I'm saying? He going it's, – it's third. It's fourth and – it's fourth and six. They had to the 20-yard line, 18-yard line. We're going to go for what? It's not like y'all down. For what? But then, too, you got to run the ball. I understand you didn't have running backs like that when you were there. You have probably the, a top three running back. Yes. You have to run the ball. Yeah. It's, it's not, and we can't blame it on because they're getting behind. No, you're not running the ball enough. Yeah, you got to feed him. Feed him. Because he, he is the catalyst to make that thing <clears throat> work properly. Yeah. He makes that thing work properly. And, and it's just like, and I'll leave like this. I think McCarthy has uh, Dak Prescott on his fantasy team. We can take a break right after that. (laughs) There's a lot going on in the world, and your world is always changing. That's why it's important to stay connected. The latest news, the latest entertainment, the newest music. If it's in the air or on the air, it can be in the palm of your hand, wherever you are, with the iHeartRadio app. iHeartRadio. Over 1,500 live radio stations from across the country and over 15 million songs to create your own custom stations. Text IHR to 45495 to download the app or listen at iHeartRadio.com. Standard text and data rates apply. What's up? This is Chris Tucker for the three point conversion. Let's go. 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 let us go we're sticking with the NFL, Sun Nosy Neighbor Watch. And this is where we like to be nosy. And we're paying attention to 
are not paying attention. We're being nosy about a situation with an NFL team, NFL player, organization, coach, whatever. But we're being nosy. We're peeking out that window like that old lady do when you come, when she had the door closed, your car door closed. She peeking out. So can I do two? I'm going to do two. The first one, obvious. I'm definitely, um, I didn't turn the lights off. It's about three in the morning. I ain't peeking in the kitchen. I'm peeking through my bedroom uh, blinds. I'm going to see what Kyle Allen do, the Redskins. I want to see how they respond, what they play like, what what happens. I, I just want to see the morale of the team. I know Carita said she don't think it hurts because Rivera said they want to win, but, I mean, Rivera just could be saying that just to make himself look good. So to find that out, I'm going to be nosy and I'm going to be peeking just to see what happens. And then I hope I don't steal yours. Um, I got I got to look at Houston. That was yours? No. Go, go ahead. I want to hear where you're going with it. So, no, go ahead. I'm going to let you go because I don't want to steal yours. No, 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 no. I don't want. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm peeking at Deshaun. Okay. Specifically peeking at Deshaun. Okay. Because they got the problem out. Right. They yep. got the problem. See, see, yep. They got the problem out of there. So can, can I come over and watch Suda? I might come hey, over hey, there. Hey, hey, hey. We might <laughs> get some wings and be picky. Because <laughs> right. I, I, I want to know. Because, like I say, we got the problem out of there. Uh-huh. Even though he gave away some he gave away <laughs> some groceries before he left. Right. But we got the problem. Now we got to see who Deshaun really is. Mm-hmm. That's what that that's one. That and my other one is down in New Orleans. I'm looking at Drew Bree. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. He can't make them throws. No. Nah. He can't he, he, hey, his outs ain't <laughs> No, but let me ask you this. Okay. Is is it do you think it's more of I don't think the arm strength his he's never been that type of guy anyway, but mm-hmm. or is it because who was going deep? When the last time they asked somebody to go deep? Hey, can't, do, do, do we not go deep because we know we can't get deep and the ball ain't going to get deep? You know, I just found out Ted Ginn plays for the Bears. Yeah, he do punt return. We don't even use him, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, don't, I don't know. Like, but, I don't so know what I'm wondering Because when Ginn was there, he was he, we would see him do it. You know, Michael Thomas running f- five-yard outs. That's yeah. all he does. Yeah. Um, Take on Smith maybe, but. Emmanuel Sanders, he he doesn't have the speed anymore. Shoot, the only person that probably go deep is Jared Cook. That's the only person I see him throw. So, but is it that? But it's a slow deep, right? Jared Cook is a slow deep, so he can. Or, or their deep play is throw it to Kamara and let him run for forty yards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pitch it to him and let him run. I'm, I'm seeing the box score. I'm yeah. with you on that. Fifty-five yard touchdown. <laughs> yeah. Are you good, G? Did you have a nosy neighbor? Uh, I, I was kind of with you. Like I'm looking at Deshaun. <laughs> I'm looking at Drew Brees. Um, I'm looking at uh, I this Carolina Atlanta game. <laughs> Look, mm-hmm. if if they if the Falcons go zero and five, Dan Quinn has to be fired mm-hmm. before he gets to the locker room at the end. Dan of the Quinn game. shouldn't have never made it on the plane from Dallas. Mm. He should not have been on that on the plane from they, Dallas. You don't fire coaches that early in the season. I know, I know, <laughs> I know. Houston, it's a continuation. Hey, hey, Houston, uh, Houston, it's a continuation. Listen, Houston waited at least four games, but it's they, a continuation. So, 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 so I'm talking about the the game from week three of last year. It's a continuation. Mm. It's a it's not it's not four games into this season. It's a continuation, and I'm also. I got another nosy neighbor, Cal Shanahan. Yeah. San Francisco 49ers, I'm also looking at them. They but that might be from a hate. That might be hate, that no, might be your pure that might be yeah, a pure hate. But I'm peeking. They're playing they, Miami. They probably got they probably got, they got more. Jim, they got Jimmy G coming back. Okay. Okay. Uh, ho, ho? But I was gonna say they probably got more interest than y'all do. So like uh, hold on, hold on. you keep saying y'all. I mean I'm sorry. I am not then an the, Atlanta Falcon fan. Then the Falcons, my bad. Yes. Then the Falcons. I quit that drug. So would you if, they, if they fight Dan this week, you'll be back. You'll be I'll back. put my socks on. <laughs> I'll put my socks on. So, look, so speaking of that, you talking about Miami and San Francisco and 
Who's your upset? Who upset for the week? This Cle- this Cleveland Indiana game. Mm-hmm. That's gonna be a very interesting game. That to me probably be the game of the week. But do you think that's an upset? Because they're both three and one. They're playing well. It's no, and it's it's uh, the uh, spread is even. Right. It's well, I I put it like this. Let me say my I got Miami versus San Francisco. I I think with Jimmy G coming back and all, I think Miami. Every game Miami's played, believe it or not, even though we waiting for that eight interception game by um, yeah, so Fitzpatrick, Fitzpatrick. yeah, but every every game they played, they've been in there, they've mm-hmm. been close, they've been there. I just feel like, and and think about who they played. They played a Buffalo, then they played a Seattle. Mm-hmm. Like I think they get San Fran this week. I think Houston gonna beat Jacksonville. Is that an upset? <laughs> and, and I think it's. I think in the only reason I would think it was ups, be an upset because Houston, of the turmoil. Houston's favored. They are. Yeah. yeah. Why? They play Jacksonville. <laughs> but Jacksonville, that the, the mustache. Yeah. They've been playing some. They play catch up ball, right? They catch up. But, but Houston has been Houston. The problem is gone though. The Houston we have a problem is gone. We ain't got to do that but, anymore. But, but is the cancel still in the building? Because they they kept. They didn't. They didn't fire everything. Right. Well, he was the GM too. But they had an assistant GM. They had a, a, a somebody of operations. They got somebody. True. They got a towel. They had the towel boy. True. He was still there. The football boy still there. If they don't get rid of that, some of that is still in there. Right. All right. Well, I feel you. I'm not mad at you. Did you have one G? Or are you good? Um, I guess mine would be. Uh. It's hard. No, you ain't have one. It's hard. It, it, this, this. I mean, what? I mean, I guess there won't. There won't be really. It's not a lot of games to yeah. upsets anyway. So yeah, you got, I mean, th- these are some of these are even. I right. mean, I don't. I don't think the Bengals are going to beat the Ravens. So right, that's what I'm saying. So I don't it, see it, the it, Jets winning the game this year. Yeah, it was so. kind of hard. Um, if they play the Falcons, let's go with win. the let's go with the picks then. So I'm glad you said the Falcons, Atlanta, Carolina. Um, I'm not gonna start with you because I know that's your team. I'm gonna start with. I'm gonna just let him go. Who who do you think? Why do you think? Who do you got on this? Or who do you have on this game? Uh, Atlanta, Carolina. I'm picking Carolina. Um, I don't know where the. I, I don't. I, the Falcons are. I don't know what they're gonna do. I don't know how. I like. They feel on paper it looks like they have more talent or that they should win the game. But I don't know what I'm going to get out of them anymore. Mm-hmm. Okay. So Carolina is, is they're starting to get it together uh, uh, each week, you know, because you always feel that teams that have new quarterbacks or may sh- struggle a little bit. But I think they're getting it together. I don't know what Atlanta's doing. Okay. So um, I'm, picking, I'm picking Carolina. I think we all we all pick Carolina. So yeah. Jacksonville, Houston. Uh, we're just gonna we're gonna go with you. What, why, why do you think Houston? You said Houston's gonna win. Why do you have Houston winning? I think they trying to they trying to build something, and I, Deshaun got something to prove. And this is go, this is one of those can 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 he step up and show you that he is the quarterback that we thinking he is? Mm-hmm. And I think this is one of the games that catapult that him just starting to show you that the problem was truly. O'Brien. Okay. So, Chargers, New Orleans. I have the Chargers winning. I think now I hope I hope the rookie don't play bad because now he's starter. You know what I'm saying? Okay, I, I, I got the missions accomplished. I hope he don't set back. But I just think right now, I don't know if they put New Orleans, but I, I just think with, New or- with Chargers being able to score a lot, New Orleans can too, but I just got a feeling, man, that this is his coming out party for real. He's excited. He's starting. The other players believe in him. I, I, I guarantee you, the other players have been lobbying for him to start. Yeah. So, I'm, I'm going with um, I'm going with the Chargers. Indy Cleveland. You spoke on it earlier. I'm gonna go with you. Why you say Indy Cleveland? You say Cleveland, right? I, 
I don't know. That's a hard one for me. I'm gonna take I'm gonna take Indiana, but that's a hard game for me because you 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 got two quarterbacks that you still don't know. You're gonna get a lot of yards out of Phillip Rivers, but you might also get a lot of interceptions right. out of Phillip Rivers. And and Cleveland still to me don't don't use they assets the way they need to. Right. So it's that's a toss. It's almost a toss up. But I'm gonna take Indiana over Cleveland. I'm, I I'm, still don't. I don't. I don't believe. Who did you pick, G? I'm taking the Colts. See, uh, they have the number one defense in the league. While the the Browns do have the number one rushing offense, Colts had a number one rushing defense. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm, I'm taking Cleveland because of that. I, I think they will be able to rush the ball and what's make what we find out about Baker Mayfield with this offense is you rushing the ball the play action works when the play action works Odell gets open mm-hmm. and you got other people open mm-hmm. and they're starting to have fun mm-hmm. but also they're not really putting the game in Baker's, Baker's hands hand. no that's the point because so, they're they're running it 35 that's, that's my point times. so with the, when you do that and with the play action now these throws are Easy, you got yeah. people open yeah. lanes and, open. Yeah, yeah. That, that's why I say that. And then, so I got Cleveland. Then last pick, Buffalo, Tennessee. Game that should not be played. You're all right, right, right. Uh, Buffalo wins by forfeit. <laughs> and, and, Even though the NFL yeah. said the Titans so, had no positive test, no, some somebody's gonna pop up. Forfeit. Yeah. If they I, do play, I think the Bills win. Uh, yeah, I'm a Bill. Yeah. I, I pick uh, Buffalo. I, pick, yeah, I, yeah. I just feel like Tennessee right now. They hadn't practiced. They hadn't. It's been they hadn't practiced in two weeks. Yeah, yet. and they got a buy. And it was a you could say it was a buy, but it's almost two weeks they hadn't yeah. practiced. Yeah. So yeah, I'm going. Um, Is that even safe to, for the to even put them on the field? Is that even safe for them to even be put on a football field? No practice. That's what I'm saying. Like I don't zoom, zoom, zoom can't help you hit nobody. Right? Because I think they're trying. Now nah, they're letting them practice. They practice today, Sunday, and Monday, and they got two. So I guess they're saying, okay, we're gonna give them three. But I just think the NFL is rushing to trying to make money. So yes, sir. all right, well we gonna um G. I don't know if G had the picks up already, but those are the picks. These you'll see D's picks as well. D and Electra, even though he couldn't be here, but he made his picks as well. So you'll see our picks that Big we have. Falcons, by the way. He picked the Falcons, and you see our record as well. So, um, all right, we're going to take a quick break, and we will be back with more sports. down to y'all what's so dope about the three-point conversion first of all everybody is a fan of the game first second of all everybody is a student of the game second and third of all we're the average sports fan just like everybody else we're not coming in here walking with our nose tipped high acting snooty acting brand new this is a grassroots organization bar none the three-point conversion where fans' opinions matter. Be sure to visit the website wwwthe number 3 pointconversioncom Get your fix, get your articles, multimedia, and everything else that you as a sports fan need. So again, the three point conversion.com. It's where it's at, man, where fans' opinions matter. and you're listening to the three-point conversion. All right, we are back inside the three-point conversion sports lounge. And we have 
special guest, the three-point conversion MLB analyst, Mr. Cortland Griffin. What's going on, Cortland? Just living, man. I haven't. It's a, it's a good weekend. You know, could have been better, but uh, if last night would have went the way it was supposed to. But yeah, what's your the greatest player? You can't even take no shot. But no, nah, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, nah, it was a great game. But um, getting into this MLB man, uh, hometown. Oh, I thought you were talking about the Yankees. Anyway, go ahead. Uh, it was both man, it was both. I know, right? <laughs> so um, lot hometown looking good. You got four games. Everything's going good. With I mean, it's some good matchups. But I want to start right. in the American League. Now, I'm not taking credit because, oh, I, I knew they was going to make it because they got this and they got that. But I did. My pick was the Cubs, which we didn't do anything against the Astros. People thought I was crazy. Just because, I, I said it just because I felt like the experience. With Houston, they, they're undefeated in the playoffs so far. Why do you think they've been so good? Well, like you said, the experience. Um, they've been able to turn it on in the playoffs, and that's a big thing. And uh, when you pick well, – because I, I, I had the Cubs winning that series as well, and um, and I, I haven't picked them to win the series. Uh, they've been the underdog, but they're thriving in that. Um, a lot of people uh, viewed them as front runners uh, prior to this season because they were that good. Uh, they were what the LA Dodgers were this year, not so much as like the, as far as like the, the the dominant winning, but they would get out front and they would just, and they would keep you down. Now they're the underdog and they're still ha- they still have that mentality. Altuve is, is is up there and and he's he's getting the 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 hits that you need in in crunch time. Um, Correa, those guys, they're they're hitting the ball. Uh, at a at a very good clip, but it's their defense as well. Uh, as far as like fielding, pitching, they're keeping teams low, and that's what they need. That's what they need. Uh, if they can keep the game close, they can get you. They can. And once that seventh, eighth inning comes around, ninth inning, they're that's when they start to ramp it up. And they're, uh, but it doesn't get easy from here. It doesn't get easy from here. Um, it, their experience is going to help. It's going to be key. Uh, for them, uh, they you know their eyes on the prize. Of course, they're a series away, three wins away from a uh, from another World Series berth. But it, it doesn't get easier for here uh, from here for them, and their experience is going to have to carry them because the talent. I mean, they only have maybe three or four guys that scare you uh, or that you game plan for, or if you're a pitcher that you're like, okay, I have to control. The, you know, I have to control the box. Um, um, to get this guy off the mound, or I may have to walk this guy. But it, it's it's the defense. If you're a batter and you're going up against that bullpen, um, you don't want to hang one. Like you don't want to hit it and hang one in the air because they're that good. They can get a double play quickly. They can they can steal one off. You know, uh, uh, if you if you hit you know if you're trying to hit one over the wall, they got guys that can go go back and steal one. That's that's where this team is 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 living right now is is from experience and from the defensive end. What does Tampa Bay Rays has to do to beat the Astros? Be them, um, and 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 I know that sounds like a very generic, generic cliche answer, uh, but literally be them. Uh, the Tampa Bay Rays. I, I had the Yankees winning that series. Uh, and I knew that series was going to be close because they were division rivals. Uh, but they were able to beat a Yankees team that has great offense. If you look at game one of that series, the Yankees ran them, out, uh, ran them off the field. Then the Yankees' bullpen came up big uh, to to make a, uh, to clinch it. Uh, or not to clinch it, but to send it to a game five. But the, the Rays were able to weather the storm uh, after the Yankees went up last night, the Yankees uh, uh, had a big home run. Uh, it was a big home run, and then they were able to to just like you know, like they're, they're focused. They're, they've been, like I said, laser focused all playoffs long. They haven't really weathered uh, uh, or wavered, I, you know, and 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 that's something that's big too. They're just like the Astros, but they have more talent, 
and that's where this that's where this series is going to be interesting. It's because you have two teams that are literally the literally the same. They're they're team first defensive teams, but the Tampa Bay Rays have more talent, and the Tampa Bay so Tampa Bay just has to be them. Just be who you were all regular season long. Weather the storm and 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 essentially overwhelm your opponent. Uh, they're they're a great hitting team. They're not gonna you know they're not gonna blast a lot of home runs. But they're a great hitting team. They're also a great defensive team. They transform themselves from a balanced team to just a great defensive team who can go and get runs uh, at any moment in the game. So it's it, that's who they that's who they are. The Astros are not a great hitting team. They have a great defense. They have great defense, great bullpen, and, and great fielding. The Tampa Bay Rays have that, and they can get offense. So I think the Tampa Bay Rays to win this series just have to be them. Just do what you've been doing. Don't change anything. Don't don't get uh, uh, too into the moment. Don't let the moment uh, uh, you know. Don't let the moment rule you. This is uh, this is your opportunity to go and get a World Series, and you have to go through a team that's been there, that's done that, uh, and, and a team that's motivated in the Astros. And you have to be focused to beat them. All right, so I'm gonna ask you. I'm gonna ask you two and one because um, we're pressed for time. Mm-hmm. The Braves undefeated as well, hometown ATS. Shout it. What will right. it? What will it take for them to keep this up? But at the same time, can the Dodgers? Is the can the Dodgers offense put pressure on this team? I don't think so, uh, and the reason why is. Uh, the Atlanta Braves are are they remind me of the Miami Heat right now. Uh, they're the team that no one expected to be here. They're the team that had all the, that has all the potential, never lived, never quite lived up to it uh, in the past. Now they're doing it. Uh, they, they Ozuna and Acuna. They are they are they are two guys that have been underdogs, but they are great baseball players. If those two guys, what they have to do is just get those two guys to be motivated, and they are. The pressure of the, the pressure of the city is already on you. The pressure of the city is always on the Braves. But now you're here. You're knocking on the door. Now it's time to knock it down. And I think the Braves and to me the Dodgers, as great as a, of a team they are, Mookie Betts as great of a player as he is, could possibly uh, uh, get another MVP this season. I think they overlook the Braves in this series, and the Braves uh, pitched uh, and, and they they set the upset and go to the World Series this year. To me, I, just watching the Braves play, they look hungry. They look like a team that has just that 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 has just been clawing. Even though they've been a good team all season, they just look like a team that knows like we're not. They, people didn't want us here. People didn't see us here, but we're going to prove them wrong. And, and I and I think that's where the Braves are are great. It's because as good of players that they have, as great of a team that they are, they're they're always viewing themselves as the underdog and it and it puts them in it you know rise and makes them rise to the top in the big moments. I think with the, the Dodgers defense, the Dodgers have, you know, good offense and good defense. But the Dodgers are I mean, as much as they can score, it's not consistent. It's not a consist it's not like they're they're the Yankees or the Padres where they can just, you know, get home runs and like get offense and get out you know, get out top and keep you from uh and, and do it that way. They have to play defense too. So I think the Braves uh, with that offense and their pitching, they can do it. They can pitch the upset and go to the World Series this year. All right. There you have it, Mr. Cortland Griffin. Um, make sure you go to the threepointconversion.com. He will have his his previews for this series. And, man, I can't wait. It's going to be a good one. All right, man, you have a great weekend. We're going to take too, man. Thank you. We're going to take a quick, quick break, and we'll be back. Have you been looking for a radio station that gives you sports? I don't believe it. Oh, it's a touchdown. Entertainment. Are you not entertained? And other special interest talk shows. Well, isn't that special? All on one app. Yeah, that's dope. What app is that? It's the real 1100 AM app for WWE. Grab it for free in your Google Play or Apple App Store today. All right, we are back inside the three-point conversion sports lounge. 
before we go, um, just want to mention real quick, just one minute. I'll take 30 seconds, whatever. Le- the LeBron situation again. So I'm going to ask you again. So what Kyrie said, should we all, well, I, I was with Kyrie, but should most people forgive Kyrie or apologize for what Kyrie said? Or do they understand now what Kyrie was saying? Those people need to look inside themselves. Kyrie ain't saying nothing wrong. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Because LeBron, if you know the game and if you know LeBron, LeBron is not, he's not that killer mm-hmm. in that way. Right. LeBron is going to make the best play. He's been making the best play for 17. He's been making the best play since high school. And that's why they get to the finals for the most part. He because the he makes yeah. the best play. Kyrie hit the shot. LeBron made the defensive stop, but Kyrie hit the shot. Mm-hmm. LeBron is going to make the best play. And, and it wasn't that like, it was, all right, there you go, Kyrie. Do your work. Yeah. And it was the it probably was the best play. It was the best play. Curry, he had Curry on him. This is why you're here. Yeah. yeah. This is why you're here and me. It, I'm gonna get this, feed this to you, and then I'm gonna go make this defense. I'm gonna make this defensive stop. Right. I'm gonna do what I do, and I got you here to do what you do. Right. And I'm gonna make sure you get what you need to get. Right. All right. Um. Okay. So that's what it is. So you hear this music. You already know what it means. It means it's time to let you go. Before we let you go, we have a couple of shout outs and um, stay tuned because you might be one of them. First, I want to give a shout out to the Almighty God for giving me the um, this platform to do what I do, say what I say, make you all mad, happy, upset, want to give me the stop it button. I appreciate that. I ain't going to pick on you, Jerry. I mean, because I already know what you're thinking. So I'm, I, I, I know Jerry ready to get rid of. Uh, <laughs> McCarthy because McCarthy is sticking it up but hey I'm going to leave it at that also I'm going to talk uh, I want to thank our guests I want to thank um, Corita Parks for coming on I want to thank Cortland Griffin for coming on of course man um, got to thank my guy G shout out to D shout out to our sponsors Ortho Atlanta my man um Rick, always coming in, making it fun. Appreciate you. Gio. And I um, want to shout out to my beautiful family, lovely wife, beautiful children, uncles, aunties, brothers, sisters, cousins, um, nieces and nephews, grandparents. Love family. Let family know that you love them. Love on them while they're alive. Oh, shout out to my play cousins. Um, watch some good sports. Eat good. Be safe, be healthy. Until then, until then, next week, same time, same show, same crazy host, same sports nonsense. Will you miss me? I'm out. Peace. Hey. Just got done listening to the Three Point Conversion Sports Lounge. Be sure to follow us on our Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook accounts at the Three Point Conversion. And also make sure you check out our website, the Three Point Conversion.com. Be sure to follow us live and listen every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Eastern.